Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will learn about the grammars. Uh, you must be knowing that in every language that we speak or write, uh, there are certain rules defined for that language. The constructs of that language uh, is written according to those rules only. And uh, since uh, we are dealing with the natural languages, for example, Hindi, English, or any other language, so for those natural languages, the set of rules are defined, which are known as the grammar. So too for the programming languages as well. So for the programming languages also, the uh, some rules are defined, and those rules are actually in the form of the grammar. And every grammar is actually the collection of some productions. <coughs> These productions are of type alpha produces beta and uh, these alpha and beta are the collection of vertices and the terminals. Uh, vertices are also known as the variables and uh, T means the terminals. It means alpha and beta are the element of variables and terminals and the combination of these. Okay. So there are some types of some types of the languages which are defined uh, for the programming languages. Uh, those are type zero less type zero grammar, type one grammar, type two grammar, and type three grammars. So we, uh, in this lecture, we will try to differentiate between these type of the grammars. <coughs> Suppose there is a production of type a a b produces b b and then a a produces epsilon so in this uh, grammar there are two productions one is this one and the other one is this one uh, on the left hand side we have the combination of terminal and non terminals this a and b are the terminal symbols and capital a is the non-terminal symbol that we know that we also know know as the variables similarly on the right hand side this is a combination of a non-terminal uh, b and a non-terminal capital b <clears throat> for this production a is small a is the terminal symbol capital a is the non-terminal symbol and epsilon is the uh, terminal symbol Fine. Not, not, not the terminal symbol, but epsilon means nothing. So these two productions are defining how the grammars are written for any programming language. So uh, let us start with the type of language type 0 in which there is no restriction on how we write these productions. For example, this production only A, A, B that produces a small b and capital B. There is no way we are defining any rule for writing these variables and the terminals on left hand side and on the right hand side. It is just that if the production is of type alpha and beta, alpha produces beta, then alpha and beta should be the combination of variables and terminals or any combination of these. So this is an unrestricted type of uh, writing the grammar. So those unrestricted type of writing the grammar is known as the type 0 grammar. <clears throat> there is another type of the grammar which is known as the type 1 grammar. And uh, type 1 grammar is made by applying some restriction to the type 0. Fine. For example, if the alpha produces beta is the type of the production that we are writing in the grammar, then the length of alpha should be less than or equal to the length of the symbols in the beta. That means if I have A A B produces B B B. <clears throat> so here what we are saying that there are three symbols on the left hand side and there are three symbols on the right hand side. So it is perfectly all right that is following the rules of the type 1 grammar. But in case we have a production of type A A B produces small b and capital B. This production is not of type type 1 because the length of the symbols or the number of symbols on the left hand side of the production 
is actually greater than the number of symbol on the right hand side. Here we have three symbols and here we have two symbols. So this grammar will not be a type 1 grammar. Another production let's say we have AA produces small b capital B small c. So this production can also be of the type 1 because if this is alpha and this is beta this number of symbols on the left hand side are 2 and number of symbols on the right hand side are 3. So it is acceptable. Fine. This is acceptable because the number of symbols on the left hand side are 2 and number of symbols on the right hand side are 3. So this is the type 1 grammar. There is another type of the grammar which is known as type 2 grammar. And the type 2 grammar is formed by <clears throat> applying more restrictions on the type 1 grammar. So, fine. So we have made the type 1 grammar from the type 0 grammar where we have not applied any in the type 0 grammar we have not applied any restriction but in the type 1 grammar we are applying some restrictions and it has become the type 1 grammar. So the restriction was that the number of uh, symbols on the left hand side should be less than or equal to the number of symbols on the right hand side. So in the type 2 grammar we are applying more restriction on the grammar. So what restriction we are applying if this is, there is a production of type alpha and beta then the number of symbols on the left hand side is restricted to only one and this alpha cannot be a terminal symbol. Alpha is always an element of the variable. It cannot have the terminal. It, 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 will, always, it will always be a variable. And obviously the alpha will be less than or equal to beta means the length of the symbols or the number of symbols on the left hand side will be less than or equal to the number of symbols on the right hand side. This this uh, restriction was already there in the type 1. Need not write, uh, we, we, we need not write it again here. But yes, just to understand if I have to define only type 2 grammar and given uh, we have not, the, uh, this, this type 0 and type 1 grammars are not in the picture, then we should define these two things that uh, alpha produces is the type of the production length of alpha has to be 1. Alpha is always a non uh, a terminal sim uh, a non terminal symbol or the variable and number of uh, uh, elements on the left hand side is less than or equal to the number of elements on the right hand side. For example, if I have a production of type A produces A, A, B. So it is perfectly alright. There is only one symbol on the left hand side there are three symbols on the right hand side. On the left hand side we have a variable or the non-terminal. Let's say we have a production of type A produces small a capital A capital B small b. So this also is a type of type 2. This also production is lies in the type 2. Let's say we have A produces epsilon. So this is also acceptable. Fine. So we have only one symbol on the left hand side. That's the best part of it, the type 2. Now the type 3, where we are applying the maximum number of the restriction. <clears throat> so uh, the restrictions that we have already applied to the type 2 will continue to, to, uh, to type 3 also. But we are applying more restriction on this. Let's say we have a production of type A produces B A. Okay or B produces A, C. Differently, if I have, differently means this is another grammar and this is another grammar. So in this grammar, what is happening that the non-terminal symbol on the right hand side is exactly one and that non-terminal symbol is towards the left. Fine. So there are no, not more than one uh, terminal symbol on the right hand side. There is exactly one uh, uh, non-terminal on the right hand side and we are applying more restriction meaning that <coughs> meaning that uh, uh, the the, the non-terminal symbol should appear only on the left hand side or a non-terminal symbol should always appear on the right hand side so the two restrictions do two basic restrictions that there should be a non-terminal symbol 
only one non-terminal symbol on the right hand side and that non-terminal symbol has to be either towards the left or towards the right. If I have the non-terminal symbol on the left side, we say that this grammar is left linear and if I have the production of this kind, this is known as the right linear. Fine. So there are two types of uh, the linear grammars, left linear and right linear. There is one more type of the linear grammar that is known as the middle linear grammar. So what will be there in the middle linear grammar? Something like A produces small a, capital B, small b, in which there is exactly one non-terminal symbol on the right hand side and that is in between two symbols A and B. So this is the middle linear grammar. Only one non-terminal symbol and that is surrounded by two terminal symbols. Here we had only one non-terminal symbol but on the left hand side we did not have, on the left hand side of this uh, non-terminal symbol we did not have any symbol but on the right hand side we had a symbol. For this one on the left hand side we have a symbol but on the right hand side we do not have any symbol. Fine. So this is left linear and this is right linear and this is middle linear. Now this left linear is acceptable in type 3, right linear is also acceptable in, uh, in type 3 but the middle linear is not accepted in the type 3. Okay, Let's say we have a set of the linear grammars. So a subset of this is only type 3. Fine. So this is the linear grammar set. Out of the linear grammar set, there can be three types of the language, three types of the grammar. One is left linear, another one is right linear, and the middle linear. So only left linear and right linear can be selected as the type 3 grammars. Middle linear cannot be selected as the type 3. Fine. Now, uh, having uh, the knowledge of the type 0, type 1, and type 2, and type 3 grammars, now what we are going to do, we have to give some names to these types of the grammar. Fine. So you can see that in the type 0, we did not apply any restriction. So that's why we are saying that this is unrestricted grammar. So we are not applying any restriction. So this is unrestricted grammar. And the type 1, in which we are applying some restriction that the length of the uh, symbols on the left hand side has to be less than or equal to the length of the symbol on the right hand side. We are saying that this is context sensitive grammar. Fine. So we have applied some context. Context means if we are selecting this one, the left hand side, let's say. So this production is telling us that if we are reducing this uh, for the string, then for for this non-terminal a on the left hand side there should be small a and for the right hand side there should be small b. So we have already set a context that every a is surrounded by a and b then only we can reduce it to b b b. So this is context sensitive grammar. Now the type 2 grammar in which we have a production of type a produces small a capital A small b or a produces small a capital A capital B small b where the number of symbols on the left hand side is only one it means we are not applying any context to this if we are reducing a to this sim these symbols then we do not have any context a if we have found a that can be reduced to a a b without seeing any context that's why this type of the grammars are called context free grammars right now for this one, the type 3 one, we are applying many constraints to this. Fine. It has to be left linear or right linear. Okay. So any grammar which is type 3 is also known as a regular grammar. Fine. So we have three types of the grammar. <clears throat> type 0, the unrestricted one. Type 1, context sensitive one. Type 2, context free. Type 3. A regular grammar. Fine. So the languages generated by these types of the grammar will also be categorized as the type 0 grammar will produce the languages and type 1 grammar will also produce some language 
type 2 grammars will also produce some types of the languages and type 3 will also generate some type of the languages <clears throat> so type 3 is actually the regular language for type 3 regular language will be generated for type 2 context free language will be given for type 1 unrestricted sorry for type 1 it will be context sensitive language and for this type 0 the unrestricted language which is also known as recursively enumerable languages fine so type 0 type of the grammar is actually producing the understood or recursively enumerable languages type 1 means the context sensitive language type 2 context free languages and type 3 regular languages for every uh, language of these kinds there should be a machine that should accept the strings or the language strings fine so every lang uh, every grammar is written for the types of the languages a language is actually the collection of uh, various strings possible okay for example if i have a language it is actually a collection of the strings the many strings which is possible through that particular grammar defined so the languages accepted by these languages uh, these type of the grammars we have already written so there should be a machine that can accept all these types of uh, the strings so for type 3 we define DFA or NFA for type 2 languages we have PDA context -free, for the context free languages we have the PDA that is push down automata and for type 1 it means the unrestricted uh, sorry context sensitive languages we have linear bound automata or LBA linear bound automata and for type 0 we have Turing machine fine so these are the type of uh, the different languages and uh, for these languages the machines which which will accept the uh, uh, language strings are defined as these for type 3 we have DFA and NFA for type 2 we have push down automata for type 1 we have linear bound automata and for type 0 we have Turing machine thank you